So, the last class we identified that uh, the effects are essentially the imperfections that disrupt the perfect crystalline order. And we mentioned that there are defects which are characterized by their dimensions in which they exist. Zero dimension defects includes point defects. And within point defects, we have uh, different categories of vacancy where, where an atom is missing from the uh, position where it should have been. An interstitial defect or a self interstitial defect is a defect where an atom gets entrapped into the interstitial or the wide space present within the lattice. And then there are substitutional defects in which you have. Uh, uh, substitution taking place from the uh, from the lattice position and and then and, and there is a, and there is interstitial substitutional defect there is a lattice substitutional defect and an interstitial substitutional defect again the criteria for those defects so these these are the points that we covered in the last slide and we looked into uh, the uh, the, the formulation to calculate the uh, equilibrium number of vacancies, which is dependent, which is highly dependent upon temperature. And we looked into how we characterize the uh, composition in a solid solution in weight percent and the atomic percent. This is what we covered in the last slide, uh, last last lecture. Today we will be looking into, we'll be start, we'll, we'll be exploring the one dimensional defects which are known as line defects and they are also known as dislocations. There are two categories of dislocations that we will be looking into. Furthermore, we will have 2D defects. The most prominent is the grain boundary defects and then the bulk defects which includes the pores and cracks. So starting with the line defects, we essentially have two types of line defects. They are known as edge dislocations and screw dislocations. These are the two dislocations or line defects that we'll be looking one by one. So how do we characterize an edge dislocation? Edge dislocations. The edge dislocation can be easily visualized as an extra half plane of atoms in a lattice. So there's an extra half plane of uh, atoms present within the lattice that leads to the edge dislocation. For instance, you see this image over here. Can you find out an extra half plane of lattice that is present within this crystal structure? Uh, Add it, add it. Yes, so if you see over here, this is an extra half plane of lattice that is being inserted within this crystal structure. If you see there are one, two, three, four, five, six columns of atoms over here. And if you see one, two, three, four, five, six, this is an extra seventh half plane that has been inserted into this lattice and if you see this is a plane an extra half plane that is present there within the uh, crystalline lattice this is creating an edge dislocation now <clears throat> the dislocation is called a line defect because the locus of defective points that is that are produced in the lattice by the dislocation they lie along a line how if you see here you have a line and these points the dislocation the 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 uh, defects 
they lie along a line that is being produced in the lattice. That's why this is known as a line defect. And this line runs along the top of the extra half plane. So if we have a look at this line, this line is actually running on top of the extra half plane that is there within the lattice. The interatomic bonds are significantly distorted only on the immediate vicinity of the dislocation. So if you see these bonds over here, they are distorted. That means uh, if you see over here, this bond is roughly same, roughly same, roughly same. But if you look at these bonds, they are distorted in different directions due to the stresses created by the insertion of this extra half plane. So within the vicinity of this defect, there is a inherent uh, stress that is being created and we'll look into how this stress is basically related to uh, the presence of the extra half plane, how the stress is distributed within this extra half plane. So far, is it clear? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Now, there are certain sir, things that. Gigi. Sir, you can go back to one slide. Uh, sir, you said that you have made the lines of the stress is going there. Sir, what about the top? If I am looking at the top, there is a little distortion there. Yes, Gigi, you can you can say that this is the region in which the stress is being created. The point is the stress that would be created would be in the immediate vicinity of this dislocation line. As you go far away from this dislocation line, there would not be any effect of this defect. All right. Say it, okay, sir. Great, great. So uh, now there are certain things that you need to understand about the uh, uh, defect this is the same schematic just we have looked or we are we are looking from the defect from the front we are not looking into the lattice which is going into the screen so how do you define an edge dislocation you define it with a t sign or an inverted c t sign but where do you have to insert the t this is an edge dislocation. You have to insert the T. The first line or the straight line of the T is representing the location in which the plane has been inserted and where this extra half plane ends, you would mark it with the straight line or, or a per perpendicular cap line. Is this clear to you? So this is basically this line is essentially representing This T sign is essentially representing that there is an extra half plane which is inserted from the bottom and it ends up here. All right. Sir, uh, repeat, sir, repeat. I'm sorry, my internet was distortion. What I'm trying to say is that how? What is the symbol for edge dislocation? The symbol for edge dislocation is this sign. This could be. In, in a way it is uh, visible to you or it could be inverted. When would this sign be in a normal T notation? When the extra half plane is inserted from the bottom and it ends up here, you'll have it as a regular T. If the extra half plane would have been inserted from this side, you would have you would would you would have the inverted T sign for the edge dislocation. So the location from where the plane is inserted would uh, basically uh, uh, de define how the sign of edge dislocation would be presented. All right. Yes, sir. All right, great. Now, what is the measure of lattice distortion? 
the measure of lattice distortion is basically defined by B, letter B, which is slip or Berger's vector. This is basically the measure of the edge dislocation. How do you measure it? Let's say you you're standing at this point and you have to move around, move around the dislocation to close the loop. So let's say I am standing over here. I move one step to the left. So I am moving one step to the left and then I'm moving one step upwards and then two step upwards to so two step upwards. All right, so far is it clear? Yes, sir. Then I move one, two, three steps to the right. All right. Yes, sir. Then I move two steps downwards. And then I move two steps to the left. Now, up till now, all the steps that I have moved, they would cancel out each other. How? These two step upwards would cancel out these two step downwards these one left and two left makes three step left and I have moved three steps to the right they would cancel out each other I am standing at this point and I started from this point in order to move or in order to close the loop I have to move one step to the left left so this this extra step that I have to move in order to close the loop around the defect. This, I would say it again, this one step extra that I have to move in order to close the loop around the defect is basically the measure of lattice distortion or Berger's vector. Clear enough? Yes, sir. All right. So, sir, sir, आप इसे repeat करने ही क्या था? बेटा आप मुझे बताएं क्या था? ये अभी जो आप बता रहे हैं सर बर्जर वेक्टर क्या था? यही मैं आपसे पूछूं जो मैंने बताया आप मुझे repeat करें कि मैंने क्या बताया आपको? आप बर्जर वेक्टर के बारे में कुछ बता रहे थे? हाँ तो बेटा सो रहे थे जब मैं बता रहा था आपको? How did I start explaining? G, how did I start explaining? Sir, I was just asking you what you were saying. If we go from the red to the green, we will go to the Burgess Vector. I will tell you about this. Have you understood this thing? Have you understood that? We started from this point where I have marked my. Sir, वो समझ आ गया कि आप कह रहे थे कि जो हम सिर्फ जितनी भी left और right displacements हैं आप एक दूसरे को cancel कर देंगे और up और down displacements हैं वो भी cancel कर देंगे। लेकिन आपने जो आखर में जो कहा था ना Burgess vector मैं बताता हूँ। लेकिन अगर जब ये भी सारी cancel हो जाएंगी तो हम कहाँ पे stand करें? अगर मैं यहाँ से move, this is the starting point. If I start from this point और मैं steps balance करके डिफेक्ट के अराउंड मूव करके आता हूं तो वेयर वुड आई बी स्टैंडिंग यहां पे रेड सर्कल पे यस सर जी यस सर ऑलराइट नाउ इन ऑर्डर टू क्लोज द लूप अगर मैंने लूप को क्लोज करना है तो मुझे यहां पे मूव करना पड़ेगा एक स्टेप लेफ्टवर्ड एक्स्ट्रा स्टेप यस सर इज दिस क्लियर so what I was trying to say is that the extra step that I have to move in order to close the loop 
is basically the Berger's vector. All right. Uh, or it yes, is sir. the mayor of lattice distortion. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. loop direction clockwise line or lazmi hai ya kya anti clockwise bhi le sakte hain le sakte hain that doesn't that doesn't uh, matter but jo vector ab ye bhi keh sakte hain ye ab ye bhi keh sakte hain ye clear yes, sir all right <laughs> now how do you define burgess vector it is the displacement vector that closes the loop while traveling equal number of lattice steps around the defect so ye jo extra step hai that is required to close the loop in order to uh, in uh, while you're moving equal steps around the around, around the defect like you have to make sure that you're moving around the defect you know you start moving from this point either 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 then it's already closed but the defect was not enclosed in this movement clear Is this point clear? Yes, sir. Clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. Then you need to understand that B, which is the measure of uh, lattice distortion or Burgess vector, is perpendicular to the dislocation line. Your dislocation line is this line. All right. Yeah. If I you're looking at the front face of the lattice, if this is your lattice, going deep into the material, so your Berger vector is essentially perpendicular to this line clear okay sir ye aapki dislocation line hai na basically screen ke andar ja rahi hai and this vector vector would be essentially perpendicular to this line now uh, referring to the stress that is being caused by the uh, presence of an edge dislocation if now you see the sign since the plane has been inserted from the top you have an inverted t acha aap mujhe ye bataye ki in this region atoms are they closer or are the atoms closer in this region the upper region or sir upper region upper region the atoms jo hai closer hai kis mein zyada closer hai upper region ab dekh to upper region aur lower region mein kya hai upper mein further sir further separation type thoda sa ठीक है इधर फार अवे इन दी लोअर रीजन और राइट क्लियर यस सर सो दी अपर रीजन वुड हैव कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेन और राइट एज इफ दी एटम्स आर बीइंग कंप्रेस्ड टुगेदर एंड द लोअर रीजन वुड हैव दी टेंसाइल स्ट्रेन एज इफ दी एटम्स हैव बीन स्ट्रेच्ड अपार्ट और राइट Yes, sir. All right, great. Uh, all right. Now, if this is clear, we'll now move on towards the screw dislocation. Now, edge dislocation was rather a simpler defect to visualize. Screw dislocation is a defect that is somewhat difficult to imagine. The screw dislocation is slightly more difficult to visualize. to visualize a screw dislocation imagine a block of metal so you have a block of metal over here and 
I would start applying stress on this block in this direction and in this direction. It's a shear stress that is being applied onto this uh, block of metal. And shear, shear stress is applied across one end so that the metal begins to rip. Agar main sirf is end ke upar, I am applying the shear stress on this end. Ye jo hai, ye aise jase, uh, you start ripping a paper. Paper jaise pharna shuru karte na, aise, aise ye, it would start ripping in this, in this direction. Is this making some sense? Ko, koi samaj mein aari ye cheez? Sir, this means that we are going to the plane and the plane in opposite directions. We are going to force it. We force it, but only on this end. Ah. Alright? Upper yes, and bottom. Upper and bottom end, they are being sheared, but only at this corner. Okay, sir. Right. I'll only show you anything point. that would make it clear, but this is also clear. Hai. Is this clear to everybody? Yes, sir. All right. So what would happen would be is that this would start shearing apart. Making sense? Now, if you look at the image, is it making sense that this layer would move in this direction? This layer would start moving in this direction and it would start ripping just like if you are tearing apart a paper. Aista aista ye tear apart ho rahe. Is it clear? Yes, sir. All right. Now, if it is tearing apart, there are two surfaces that are basically separating. Ek to ye surface hai, jo ke lower surface hai, jo is block ke saath hai. All right. Jo aapko nazar aa rahi hai. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Ek wo surface hai jo ke, which belongs to this block or if you are standing over here and you look upwards to aapko sabse pehli surface jo nazar aayegi wo wo surface hoogi jo ke is block ke saath hai. Clear? Yes. Is this point clear? Thik hai sir. Nahi hai to batayin. So, this means that the upper block of the block and the lower block of the block is moved. Right now, I am just trying to make you understand that there are two surfaces, two mm -hmm. separate surfaces. One of the surface is, if you are standing over here at this green dot and you start looking upwards, so this block, ki jo ye lower surface, hai, jisko bhi main dikha sakta aapko, that would be the surface that that you'll be looking at. That is one of the surface that is ripping. Jo ye, ye jiski outline hogi jis surface ki. Agar main ye ye se kar lo, to ye surface hogi jo ki abhi hume nazar nahi aari. Clear hai? Yes sir. Aur dusri surface jo hai, wo kaun si surface hai? The other surface is the one that is exactly touching it. Wo ye surface hai. Jo ke is block ke saath hai. Is this clear? Yes, sir. All right. Is it clear to everybody? Yes, sir. All right. Now. The image to the right shows the plane of atoms just above the rip. So what we are saying is that we are looking at the layer, which is essentially layer. If you are standing over here and looking upwards, this layer is essentially shown over here. Clear? Yes, sir. All right. 
now <clears throat> if there would not have been any shear stress if there would not have been any shear stress atoms would essentially be lying at these positions all right agar shear stress na hota to atom jo maine draw kiya hai is position pe lie kar rahe hote is it clear or not yes sir clear clear sir clear hai ye atom sare jo hain wo sare is line pe lie kar rahe hote now what has happened due to this shear uh, the 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 shear that you have applied some of the atoms which are appearing in this red color or atoms which are appearing in the red color they have moved a complete one step complete atomic distance these red atoms they have moved complete atomic distances and they have acquired new positions clear atom jo yahan pe pada hua tha wo ek complete atomic distance spacing move kar gaye is this clear yes sir yes sir or these blue atoms they are the atoms which have not experienced the shear stress at the moment clear yes sir yes and, sir and the green atoms are the atoms which are somewhere in between at the moment they have moved from their original position but they have not acquired a complete uh atomic distance movement clear yes sir all right yes sir so it says the blue atoms represented the circles which uh, the atoms which have not moved from their original position as yet the atoms represented by the red circles have moved to their new position in the lattice and and have reestablished metallic bond they have recreated their bond and the atoms represented by green circles are in the process of moving all right is this clear to you the point is clear to you guys yes sir and yes sir if, if i draw this line the red line behind this line the defect has there is no defect ahead of this line you have the defect that has been created so you call this red line as the screw dislocation line and the symbol is this curly arrow that represents the screw dislocation all right yes sir now how to measure the Uh, the the amount of screw dislocation again as we measured in edge dislocation it was a single step to the left that was the burgess vector in screw dislocation you would move around the defect in this loop so i am moving from a region where there is no defect i am moving from a region where there is no defect i am moving in a region where there is defect and coming back to the same point so if i start from this blue dot i move 1 2 3 4 5 6 steps forward so i am moving 6 steps forward then i am moving one step downwards one step downwards one step in this direction i said let's say one step out of screen and again i am moving 1 2 3 4 5 6 steps backwards and then i am moving one step upward 
one step upward to close the loop. So six forward, six backward would cancel out. One downwards, one upward would cancel out. There is one step out of a screen that you're moving. That is basically the measure of your uh, uh, the, the measure of your uh, screw dislocation. So this is the Burgess vector B, which is representing the amount of defect that has been created due to the screw dislocation. Clear enough? Yes. Sir. All right. If it is clear, I'll stop over here and I'll take your attendance before we move on.